In their buildings, this is halfway to victory. I was born in a state in the making. It was an idealistic moment in my people's history. It was not driven by fanaticism of religion, but by the ideology of the Enlightenment. I grew up at the time of the kibbutz and the cooperatives, a society that believed in equity. This experience had profound impact forming my being as an architect in relationship to society. And I do not say this as an abstraction, but rather from the perspective where I, and may I say we, relate to society as architects. Ideals translate into an ethic, an ethic that must guide us as a profession. I think it is for each of us to figure that for ourselves. But what more fitting moment today for me than to declare my own. I reflect on the words of my mentor, Louis Kahn, who said, let the building be what it wants to be. What is a building's deep and inherent purpose? To me, discovering the life intended in a building, be it a school, a hospital, a performing arts center, a mosque, is the fundamental question. If you design a school, one question matters. Is it a conducive place for learning? This exploration of fitness to purpose must be at the center of architectural invention. As a profession designing the physical environment, we draw heavily on society's resources. Our art is a material one. How we use materials, the building systems we evolve, the energy our buildings consume is fundamental to a responsible building. This is about designing buildings that are inherently buildable, which are conceived, to use Frank Lloyd Wright's words, in the nature of materials. This is what differentiates us from the other arts, from sculpture, from music. Through generations, it has been a powerful component of architectural expression. We were all here born into a globalizing world. My commissions have drawn me, as it has drawn many of you, to many continents and many countries. I have had the good fortune to design places for the Inuits in the Arctic, the peasants in West Africa, places for Sikhs and Muslims, national institutions for Canada, Israel, United States. I became an attentive student of culture, and I discovered the satisfaction of creating buildings which truly belong, which feel as if they had always been there, yet responding and resonating with the needs of today. I learned that architecture cannot be independent of place, and the notion that there are universal solutions that fit all must disappear just as colonialism did. Glass towers in the desert are not meant to be any more than igloos in the tropics. I've always believed, I've always believed that we must draw on our heritage, the lessons learned from those who built before us. In the words of Ecclesiastics, there is nothing new under the sun. But without contradicting the scriptures, it is also true to say that there are the problems and issues of the moment, a planet which now the great majority live in cities. In the countryside and the towns, we had guaranteed open space, air, light, con contact with nature, now, living in cities whose size escapes our imagination, 10, 20, 30 million and growing, 
and densities that were not meant for a species that evolved roaming in the savannas. The reality is a world in which the dominant building type is a high-rise building. With it, life-sustaining elements are threatened. Light, air, a sense of identity, contact with nature, privacy as well as community. Neither the privacy of the house nor the community of the village are possible without major new inventions which transcend individual buildings. They demand a new urban vision. I've always felt that this should be known as the American Institute of Architects and Urbanists. In every age and in every school of architectural thought, architectural concepts were derived from the concepts of the city as a whole. Architects always recognize that it is the aggregation of buildings that form places, and places form districts and districts form cities. It is the urban environment that we experience in our daily life that really matters. At the time when our cities are both thriving and ailing, proliferating to accommodate the majority of humankind, yet increasingly depriving us from the fundamental quality of life, not only light, air, nature, but the deprivation of mobility, the erosion and privatization of the public realm. Now is the time to declare, once again, that it is the cities that we create that matter. And since we are in Atlanta, may I dare echo, I have a dream. I have a dream of high-rise cities transformed, penetrated by light and sun, with plant life and gardens on land and sky, towers clustered into communities served by innovative modes of transportation, mobility restored, that the agora and the souk and the city squares of bygone days are reinvented into new centers, integrating culture, commerce, and governance into places we can call urban oases, where privatized malls give way to vital and inclusive city centers worthy of our civilization. Humanizing megascale is the single most urgent task that awaits us in the decades to come. In accepting this award, I want to remind us that making architecture is a collective act. Like opera, it takes a composer, a libretto writer, a conductor, a, a choir master, soloist. I want to thank the devoted members of my firm, many there for many decades. I want to thank the brilliant engineers and other design consultants with whom I've had the good fortune to collaborate. And last but not least, I want to thank the committed and loyal clients who made all this possible. 30 years ago, concluding my book, Form and Purpose, I wrote a poem that summed up my thoughts. It seems equally relevant today. He who seeks truth shall find beauty. He who seeks beauty shall find vanity. He who seeks order shall find gratification. He who seeks gratification shall be disappointed. He who considers himself the servant of his fellow beings shall find the joy of self-expression. He who seeks self-expression shall fall into the pit of arrogance. Arrogance is incompatible with nature. Through nature, the nature of the universe and the nature of man, we shall seek truth. If we seek truth, we shall find beauty. Thank you very much.